This fang belongs to the Waggler's Pit Viper. Look at that. I'm getting very close because he's still swollen down that food. But once he gets a little bit further down, I'd definitely be at risk of getting a bite being this close. But the good thing is the snake's not as defensive as my cobras. I've got a tasty little morsel for you, a little, little mouse hopper. Not too big, not too small. Just big enough for my growing man. Oh my goodness! Not too food motivated right now, just a little upset with us. So let's stick. Ooh, I, ooh, holy smokes, look at the scales spread on that snake. Such a vibrant looking animal. And as they get older, they're gonna become one solid green color. Look oh, how beautiful. That is such a stunning snake. Oh, there we go, he's gonna bite it. Oh, perfect, look at that. And then he's just gonna eat it all up in the corner, up on the lip of the enclosure. It makes it really dangerous. Are you ready for an excellent video? This is gonna be an ultimate video. This is gonna be a video for the history of Chandler's Wild World. Why? Because today we're gonna to be feeding the green mambas. We fed them once before off camera just to see how they're doing. Now that we know that they're hungry or they're ready to go, they're feisty little hungry mambas, we're gonna feed my green mambas and some of the other snakes we got in the snake house. It's gonna be good. As you guys know, I named this green lean machine the green mamba now. And one day, well, one day we're gonna get a bigger, bigger, nicer dirt bike. But after we deal with all the craziness of building up this facility, we'll start getting more toys, have a good time. Right, Bear? Right? Yeah, okay, anyway. So I'll see you guys at the Serpentarium. I'm gonna go see what's cooking with the snakes. And we're gonna feed some badass snakes all the way from Africa. Oh, Green Mamba needs a little. Green Mamba needs a little. Come on, Green Mamba. Yes! Daddy like. Guys, the first enclosure we're gonna be opening up is the Venezuelan rattlesnake, the Uricone rattlesnake. I love this snake so much. He's actually hanging out right here in the corner. This is a snake we got from McCarthy's Wildlife Sanctuary, an awesome sanctuary here in West Palm Beach. And they had a pair of Uricone rattlesnakes together forever. They still do. And about two years ago, they produced this beautiful baby. Let me make sure I got my feeding tools ready to go. Move a quite a distance away because this snake will strike out completely if you're not paying attention. So you gotta be very careful with this animal because the South American rattlesnakes have a nasty cocktail venom. You would not want to take a hit off this animal. So if you notice, this enclosure is very dry. This is just to simulate how it would live in a wild. This snake would not be found in the rainforest. It would be found more so in dry cow fields and whatnot living in burrows. So we're gonna offer it just a little defrosted mouse. Nice meal for this snake. And this rattlesnake is roughly around about like two feet long. When we got it, it could literally fit inside a quarter coiled up. It was such a cute little baby and still is such a beautiful snake. This is literally my favorite species of rattlesnake on the planet, the Uricone rattlesnake. It's such an awesome species. You ready? You interested? Look how beautiful that face is. Cookies and cream. Oh, did you see that? Completely struck out the wrong way. And that's why you gotta make sure you use your feeding tools because these heat seeking pit vipers could easily mistake your warm hand for a meal. Nice and gentle. Oh, nice and gentle. Look at that. A crazy, uh, not so accurate strike to a nice, gentle munch onto the head. You want it? Go ahead, eat it. That's yummy, isn't it? I'm gonna let go of that real gently. There we go. And that's gonna be a great meal for the Uricone rattlesnake. Literally, one of the prettiest rattlesnakes on the planet. I mean, look at it. Cookies and cream, white speculation in between that brown and black pigment. That is a badass rattlesnake. And this species typically gets around five feet long, maybe six feet pushing it. Not the biggest rattlesnake on the planet, like the Eastern Diamondback getting upwards to eight feet long, but still 
a heavy hitter and a beautiful animal. Oh, he's just chomping down. You know what I think a good name for this guy would be? Bonito, because he's just so beautiful. He's such a, my sweet little boy. I love him, Bonito. Oh, Bonito, the unicorn rattlesnake, my, my favorite rattlesnake in the collection. Right, he munching down? He's gonna be such an awesome display animal in the future. What a great educational ambassador, because these rattlesnakes are in every zoological facility around the world. You don't see them too often, so it's definitely a spectacle to be able to see the snake, not just on camera in these videos, but also in person. Maybe one day you guys will, will be able to see these snakes yourself as a guest at my house. We can have a cup of tea and talk about snakes, and I'll show you my snake collection. How does that sound, huh? Charge you? No, you're gonna come as a friend. Guys, with shots like this, you can totally understand why this is my favorite rattlesnake on the planet. I mean, the colors on this snake are out of this world. How many rattlesnakes on the planet even have a coloration even close to this? I mean, they stand out from the rest. They're unique, only being found in Venezuela, and that would, that's what makes Venezuela so attractive. So many cool animals that are endemic to that place, endemic to that country found nowhere else on the planet. That's why we gotta get out to Venezuela. What do you think, Ruth? Let's go. I can take you to... Or, or as they would say in Venezuela, on delay. <laughs> Ow! Ruth! All right, guys, we're going to let my good friend from Venezuela relax and enjoy his food. we got to make sure that enclosure is nice and secure first. Let's get every security measure going. With the combination, nice and secure. Now let's see what else is cooking over here. This is actually uh, the row of bioactives. The bioactives are not as bioactive as they used to be because we still haven't hooked up these misters. We want to just basically demolish everything and redo everything because these were my first ever bioactive setups. It was fun, it looks good, it worked for what it is, but now it's time to go bigger and better. It's either you go bigger, you go home, right? So why not let's do a big, beautiful bioactive setup wall with a bunch of eyelash vipers. Let's go crazy with it. Have a Chinese sharp nose bioactive, all kinds of cool stuff we can do. I mean, it's endless. I'm just waiting to get this AC cranking in here so we can have nice cool temperature and we can maintain these forest animals better. So let's see, we're gonna move over to another forest animal right over here. One of the most beautiful vipers you ever laid your eyeballs on, baby. Look at this. This is the Waggler's Pit Viper. And watch, once its heat pits, see that there's a heat signature when that glass opens, he might strike you up. Hey, buddy. Okay, looks like he's good, but he's definitely hungry. See that tongue flicking? He can taste the rat pheromones in the air, those particulates. He's figuring out that's feeding time. Well, she, I should say, because this is a sexually dimorphic species. When they look all pretty like this with the yellows and whatnot, that would be a female. Males are actually green. Ooh! <laughs> like a punch to the head. Nice, delicious mouse. Not too heavy of a meal for this snake because they are slow digesters. They're not, they don't have a fast metabolism like the cobras, the mambas, the crates, these snakes. They take about a week or so to actually get that food to digest, whereas a cobra will digest that food in a matter of 24 hours or less. So or just a little over 24 hours, however that snake's feeling depending on the temperature. Look at this. That is just such a cool snake. Look at those beautiful green speculations going around the black. It is such an awesome snake. And I definitely want to get into a prettier, more beautiful, spacey setup. Not that the snake needs more space, but man, I love giving my animals nice, big, beautiful setups, and that's what we're going to go for. Every aspect we want to hit with these animals. A beautiful environment to live in, beautiful temperatures, everything's perfect, and also a good social life, having a girlfriend. A healthy life cycle, if you know what I mean. What are you doing? You chomping down? You're almost done? That is such a beautiful snake. If I were to take a hit off this snake, meaning getting bit and envenomated, I wouldn't die unless I'm allergic to the venom, because if I was allergic, I'd go into anaphylaxis, swell up and die quicker. But if you're not allergic, for the most part, this venom will just eat away at a localized bite. So you wouldn't want to take a tag. You wouldn't die, but you could very well lose mobility of a finger, a hand, or have to get something amputated. And if I actually pull this out of my pocket, I always carry this with me, my, my little chest of fangs. Whenever a snake goes to the bathroom and I find a fang in the poop, I sit that through that poop and I find that thing, I clean it, and I put it in here. Or, if an animal bites me hard enough and the tooth is stuck in my bone, <laughs> I put it in this case. I've got lace monitor teeth, i got Bushmasters, i got Gabino, but look at this fang right here. This fang belongs to the Waggler's Pit Viper, look at that. I'm getting very close because he's still swollen down that food. But once he gets a little bit further down, I'd definitely be at risk of getting a bite being this close. But the good thing is the snake is not as defensive as my cobras. But look at that fang. That fang came off of this snake. And uh, that tooth right there, see that tooth? 
That tooth's actually from the lace monitor. I had to pull that out of the top of my finger one day. <laughs> Good times. I like to keep the memories with me. Your dad likes to keep photos in his wallet. I keep the teeth I pull out of my skin. <laughs> Animals. All right, guys, we're going to close this up. Make sure it's nice and secure because, as you can see, our Waggler's Pit Vipers just finishing down that meal. Come on, lock and secure. Ooh, makes me sweat. So let's move on. I've got a couple more mice. We're not going to be feeding these guys our eyelash vipers because the two other ones are eating lizards right now. We don't have any gnolls on us. And our big, beautiful yellow eyelash viper, you can actually see better from here. She's going through shed. You can see her eyes are real milky, but she's getting big. If she wasn't going through shed, she could probably take down one of these fuzzy mice. But uh, no luck for her. She's going through sheds on another day. We got a lot cooking today. We're definitely going to be feeding the green mambas. I think what we should do with uh, one of these smaller mice is give it to Jose, the Central American Ferdinands. Latin America's most dangerous serpent. Why? Not because they meet you in the alley and they mug you with a knife. No, they don't have arms, silly. It's because they're so frequent throughout the forest. They're found all over the floor. They're so well camouflaged, people don't see them and they step on them at night. Or a lot of people do a lot of gardening, a lot of yard maintenance in Central America because it's so humid and hot, the plants grow like crazy. So a lot of maintenance guys doing work end up getting bit by these snakes because they're reaching into the bushes, they're trimming pond fronds and whatnot, they're picking dead leaves off the floor, big old pond fronds off the floor, and they end up sticking their fingers underneath that pond frond getting tagged by a venomous snake, which is no good. But we just got to make sure we're nice and safe with him in this captive situation. He's here in the corner. He needs to get his enclosure cleaned. Okay, so what we're going to do is get this enclosure safely unlocked. Ruth, hold this just like that. Thank you very much. All right, so what I'm going to do is just unlock it real simple. We don't want to make too much of a commotion because once he realizes I'm opening up the enclosure, he'll start striking out at the glass where I'm using my fingers to open up the glass. So we might have to use a tool in a second. Oh yeah, look at him, look at him, look at him. He's all over the place. He's a crazy dude. All right, let me get that mouse. Hey, Jose, how's it going? I've got a tasty little morsel for you, a little, little mouse hopper. Not too big, not too small. Just big enough for my growing man. Oh my goodness. The way he backed off that food makes me think he wants to strike out at my face because I have such a hot heat signature right now. And I'm not fooling myself. I mean, I'm just really hot in temperature. All right, so let's get him in. Come on, get you back, get you back. Come on, no problem. We, Kevin, not now. No problems here. We're gonna put the mouse right there on the paper towel. We're gonna close this up. <sighs> Wanna be very careful. There's no mistakes to be made with a snake like this. Even though that this snake has a head the size of my thumbnail right now, he has enough venom to literally rot my hand and forearm and possibly lead to amputation. And I know a robot arm would be really cool, but I don't think I can afford that right now. So we're not doing robot arms. Kevin! Oh, that was Justina. I'm sorry I yelled at you, Kevin. Anyways, let's get this enclosure nice and secure and we're gonna enjoy Jose munching down. Okay, it looks like little Jose is done with his meal. We're gonna let him be. I can, I can actually hear his tail smacking the side of the enclosure. They actually rattle their tail to mimic a rattlesnake to let other animals know, hey, don't mess with me, I'm venomous. So we're gonna leave him alone and we're gonna move on to the, oof, the crown jewels of, of Eastern Africa. This snake, where, where are these snakes? Where'd they go? Okay, right there. These snakes are the green mambas, the Eastern green mambas that Dingo Dinkleman was nice enough to get to me. I've got one hiding right here in the hide. You can see his little snoot. Oh, he's backing up, but he's in there. There's one right there, and the second green mamba is just on the outside of the back of that hide. So we're gonna feed both green mambas right now. I got two hopper mice, defrosted, real good size for them. And these mambas, like I said, the Lapidae family, high metabolism. They eat, they poop, they eat, they poop, they grow, they grow. And this snake being from Africa, you better believe its metabolism is fast. All right, so let's see. We're gonna safely open up this enclosure. I'm actually gonna lift the glass out on this side because I have my special insulation to make sure snakes can escape when they're real young and skinny like these mambas. And I have a snake hook ready to go just in case any handling has to occur. Both snakes are on this side. We're gonna slide the glass over. 
Let's see. Let's see what's cooking. We're gonna lift up this hide real quick and actually make it a bit easier to spot them out. Look at these snakes. Ooh, look at these snakes. They're looking good. Okay, so we're gonna get this mouse hopper out. We're gonna feed this one that's close to us. You hungry? You interested? Huh? Ooh! Did you see that strike? That was very fast. Oh, I hear some hissing. This snake is actually a little bit upset. Not too food motivated right now, just a little upset with us. So let's stick. Ooh, I hear you. Ooh, I see you. That was very fast of you. I'm gonna take this other mouse and offer it to the green mom on the other side as well. Even though this this cranky one, I'm gonna grab that snake, I could be ready. Look, you see this green mama? He's all over the place. Now that they've gotten nice and settled into their new enclosures. Ooh, they're hissing like crazy. They sound like cobras right now. Now this green mamba's up on the lip. See, green mamba's actually climbed up on this lip. Gotta watch out now. Where's that hat at? Sneaky, sneaky mamba, huh? I'm gonna give, Oh, there we go. The other green mamba went straight for it. Just let go. Went straight for the food, good to go. Hopefully he goes over and starts chewing down on that food. Now I'm gonna stick their hide right back where it belongs so they feel nice and comfortable. I gotta be so careful because that other green mamba is up on the top right now. So nice and easy. Gonna slide that in there. And get this piece of glass over to this side. And get that glass nice and secure so that green mamba up top is not a threat to us. And some people would worry that say, hey, you can lift this glass out with ease. What makes it snake proof? What makes it locked and secured? Well, these locks that I actually use have a special rivet to keep you from pulling out that glass. So now, I wouldn't even be able to pull it out because that rivet, rivet prevents it, so we're good to go. So, let's see what happens. We got a mouse right here and a mouse in the back. Now we gotta wait for these green mambas to come out and eat. Dingo Dinkleman, you're the man. He sent me these green mambas for free! For free! He's like, I have some deadly snakes. How much, Dingo? For free, buddy! And then, just like this, Dingo's out in Africa sprinkling mambas all over us keepers in America. One for Tyler Nolan, one for Chandler, one for Brian, one for... <laughs> good time. You guys are hungry, huh? You want some food? My sweet little babies. My Eastern Diamondback babies. I actually just rehomed my puffing snakes. I decided not to continue with my giant Amazon puffing snake project because with all these new animals that were given to me, I had to like consolidate all these enclosures. So I want everyone to be nice and comfy and I felt like the giant Amazon puffing snakes didn't have a big enough enclosure. So now this enclosure is empty. I'm gonna clean it out real good and make it nice and we're probably gonna put our Eastern Diamondbacks in there so they have more space because those guys are getting big too. They're going on like four feet long. So let's see what happens. Let's get to the, the feasting. Alright guys, we've got one of the green mambas eating right now. They're a little bit skittish. We gotta be real careful. We can't get too close to the enclosure because we do have one of the green mambas up on the lip of this enclosure. So I think what I'll do, I'm gonna get this other mouse right there while that one munches down. What are you doing? One of my green mambas is right up here. He's hissing. He's not too up. There is his. He's right here. Let's see if he'll eat. He's right here in the corner. Let's see if he'll be interested in stro- Ooh, yeah, he's interested. Look at him. Look how beautiful that snake is. That is such a beautiful snake. I gotta get, get a little bit of a distance away because this could be very dangerous. He is not too happy. He's literally hissing like a little king cobra. There we go. Look, look how beautiful. That is such a stunning snake. He, he's so hesitant. He comes down, he thinks about it, then he goes back up. He just doesn't know. Oh, I hear you. Hissy, hissy. Oh, there we go. He's gonna bite it. Oh, perfect. Look at that. And then he's just gonna eat it all up in the corner, up on the lip of the enclosure. It makes it really dangerous. Oh, you see the tail flailing around? This is like a, like an alien. Oh, alien versus predator. There we go. There. Oh, relax. These mamas are so fighting. Yikes. That's my hand, buddy. Back up. These green mamas are something else. Look, they're all about movement. See that? Look, he'll come all the way out here just to take a chomp. Oh! Chomped again. That's probably like the third time he's chomped down like go. They're hungry, but they're very flighty at this. Oh, now he's going crazy on See? He's going to start devouring it like it's nothing. Holy smokes. Look at the scales spread on that snake. Such a vibrant looking animal. 
And as they get older, they're going to become one solid green color. They are such an awesome looking animal. Imagine going through green filled brush and you don't even know that these snakes are amongst you when you're walking through the bush in Africa. And most of the time you're never going to encounter these snakes unless they end up looking for somewhere cool to hide in an attic if it's not a snake proofed house. The name Mamba puts a lot of fear in people's hearts. but. In reality, these snakes want nothing to do with us. They're completely designed to eat small birds, mammals, reptiles like chameleons. They're not meant to go out and bite people maliciously. They don't hate people. They want nothing to do with us. Don't eat the other snake's food. That's not for you. That's for the other mamba. What are you doing? That's for the other mamba. G give me that. Give me that. Oh, I can't. All right, we're just going to let him have it. He's such a pig. Well, I guess I'll have to defrost another hopper for the other green mamba because he literally just stole his food. You sneaky, sneaky mamba. At first you didn't want any food and now you're stealing all the food? They're pigs. I told you guys, they have fast metabolisms. They eat fast, they poop fast, and they grow like hell. It is amazing. That mamba's just slurping down that mouse like it's nothing. I'm definitely going to have to go defrost another mouse for the, for the male that's in there. But don't worry, they're going to all get fed nice and well. We're going to make sure everyone's nice and happy. Let me just move this glass to this side. We're gonna put this piece back in, nice and safe. Locked and secure. All right, beautiful people. These mambas are hissy, they're twitchy, they're all over the place. But what you gotta take from that is that they don't even wanna bite me. They're trying to get away from me. The name mamba is feared throughout Africa. Whether it's green, whether it's a black mamba, West African, East African, doesn't matter. The name mamba puts fear in people's hearts. But what they need to realize is that these animals are great for our ecosystem. These are keystone species that regulate all other animals in the food chain beneath them. So without these snakes, Without these mambas in our ecosystems, our ecosystems would be out of whack. Just like if we didn't have our sharks, our crocodiles, our bears, our cougars. All these predators deserve a special spot on our planet for a rightful ecosystem. A good working ecosystem. Well-oiled machine. So guys, take the mambas into your heart with love, not hate. I'll see you on the next one. Stay beautiful, stay safe, and most of all, check us out on chandlerswildlife.com where you can get your own merchandise like Allison Don't Give a Schnitzel, which is another mamba we have here. Or Black Mamba right over here, Allison. She's literally like nine, 10 feet long. She's a beast of a Black Mamba. Love her to bits and pieces. So anyways, guys, check us out on Patreon for exclusive content not seen anywhere else in the street. And also, make sure to check out our new designs. I know I just mentioned the t-shirts and whatnot, but I didn't mention this. Woo! That's a spicy meatball. Oh, I wanna touch it, it's so beautiful. Look at how they got my facial hair. Look at my my sunnies. Look at the oh, there's Bagoy. Look at Bagoy soaring high. And then we have a saltwater crocodile and Justina backing me up in a wheelie all the way through. That's a nice piece of merchandise. Make sure you guys wear that new piece of merchandise to the Croc Fest because I'm gonna be at Croc Fest, Larry Park, Tampa Zoo, June 26th. A big conservation event raising money for the critically endangered Gary L. Wear your t-shirts to show some support. And most of all. Stay passionate, follow your dreams, never let anyone get in the way of that. Even if it is an old lady, push her aside gently and say, I will follow my dreams, and you will do what you want, because we are two different people. I'll see you in the next one. Or as they would say in Venezuela, on delay. <laughs> Ow!